Welcome to episode 133, How to Sell Aviation Art at a Trade Show. So I'm Paula Williams. I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you ladies and gentlemen out there in the aviation world sell more products and services. Absolutely. And that includes starving artists, right? <laughs> Well, I don't know that they'll be starving if they're in aviation. Yeah, well, hopefully not. Um, you know, there's a cliche about how it's really, really hard to make money in art. Yeah. It's, there's also another cliche about the best way to make a million dollars in aviation is to start with a billion, right? Yeah, well, it's probably not as bad in aviation as it is in art, but <laughs> if you don't make any the money to start with, you are probably almost have to be dead to make money in art. Right. So there's a lot that goes into selling art and I have a lot of really good friends who are artists and a lot of them are struggling. Some of them are not anymore, which is great. Yep. Uh, so, but it is a really, really tough field and aviation is a really tough field and art is a really tough field and aviation art is a really, really tough field. Right? So far. So far. So uh, we got a question this week from Nate, which is not his name. Uh, and not Nate says, <laughs> I'm going to display and sell art at NBAA in Orlando in October. I don't have a ton of money. I'm going all in on this event. I have a great corner booth and I'm planning a great display. But how do I make the most of this opportunity? An excellent question. An excellent question. And we're really glad that you're thinking about it now. We're actually recording this in June. Yes. Uh, so, you know, it's going to take some time to do the best possible presentation and the best possible opportunity to make sales uh, at a trade show, right? Actually, you need to start right about now. Exactly. Uh, and we'll show you why, right? Mm hmm Okay. Cool. So the first thing you need to do is buy, borrow, or build. Uh, a list of potential buyers and this is true even if you're not going to a show if you're trying to sell art uh, the best place to start is with a great list and what you want is as many names as possible names addresses phone numbers email addresses every bit of contact information you can get about people who are potential buyers for the art that you produce right exactly okay and the best place to start is with past buyers and this is why the longer you're in art or the longer you're in aviation or pretty much in anything else the better off you are because the longer that list of past buyers is going to be right uh, now if you're just starting out clearly you don't know people yet <laughs> you don't have a lot of past buyers you may not have even sold your first piece yet so uh you know that puts you in a different situation but there's other things that you can do as well. You can create a lead magnet on your website. Um, you know, for an artist, this might be something like, um, you know, subscribe for a free wallpaper, mm -hmm. or you know, something like that that people may want uh, if they enjoy your art. And then that gives you a list of people who at least like your style. <laughs> uh, it doesn't really give you a list of people who may be qualified or have the money or the uh, have a building or you know those kinds of things. Um, you can put together a lead capture on your website. Um, we use Lead Feeder. Mm -hmm. uh, there are others out there that are equally or you know somewhat better, or worse, or whatever. We think Lead Feeder is pretty good for the money. Um, and what it does is it gives you a, an idea of who is visiting your website, uh, and it'll just give you the IP address or the company that that comes from, and as much information as they have about that company. So then you can kind of guess from that, you know, who's the person who's most likely to be in charge of decorating the office. Often uh, the, the best person to go after is the CEO or the president or the founder because that's probably the person who has the most say over the character of the company and, and those kinds of things. Uh, but you can also get facilities managers and, and other kinds of people that uh, would be good from that, right? Exactly. Um, social media connections, you can run social media ads uh, to people who are most likely to be buyers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, referral programs, so you know, if someone buys your art, uh, get them to refer other people. Uh, people love to see things on other people's walls and, and uh, want to have one of their own. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another thing. Other people's lists, uh, lists from other artists uh, are often really, really good, or lists of people who run uh, publications that you know subscribe to these kinds of things, uh, MROs. Uh, you know you can get lists of MROs from Airpac, other places like that. Uh, lists of FBOs. 
uh, it's even better. MROs may not have a lot of budget for that in their waiting room, but... Uh, it occurs to me that all this stuff is good even if you're selling something besides art. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, this is the first time we've talked specifically about art. We've talked a lot about list building in the past. In fact, we'll put a, li a link to a podcast where we go into great depth <laughs> about list building, and that will be good for anyone, but uh, especially for someone doing art. Um, rent lists from organizations or brokers. So like, for example, NBAA, you can get lists from NBAA of people in specific uh, areas, zip codes, uh, professions, other kinds of things. They'll segment that out any way you like, and they'll even make you mailing labels, right? Will they? Yes, they will. At least last time I talked to them. <laughs> right. Um, so that's a rental of a list, which means you only get to send one piece of mail to that list. Right. Um, and that's why they want to send you mailing labels, so that you're not sticking them into your CRM, right? Or your database. Right. Okay. So, before the show, you want a list. And what are you going to do with this list? What I would recommend is creating a catalog. So, if you are into art, you're going to want a very, very nice catalog. And, you know, this can be electronic, but it would be better to have on paper. And what would be great to include in this is the story behind each piece and also information about how the art is created, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know or justify the price of art? Exactly. When you're building your catalog, you're going to have to price all these pieces. Exactly. Um, and so just like many other purchases or maybe even more than other purchases, this is an emotional uh, decision, but then people have to justify it to themselves or to their their accountants, their CFOs, other people who uh, who are involved in that decision. You know, I want to buy this piece of art for my home, or I want to buy this piece of art for my FBO, and then I have to justify it to a board, maybe, or, or somebody else. So uh, you want to give these people as much ammunition as you can to justify the price that you're setting for your art. And you want to set it high enough that it is what they call reassuringly expensive, right? Exactly. Yeah, if you see a, a great painting for $500, or if you see a Rolex for $40, uh, something in your brain goes, this can't be right. There's something wrong with this, right? Even, even if it is the real mm -hmm. item, you won't think it is because it's too cheap. Exactly. So somebody who's looking for a piece <clears throat> of art, uh, you know, the kinds of buyers that you're going to be looking for at NBAA, you're going to want these, these pieces to be priced appropriately. So you're going to want to look at other pieces of art that have sold maybe at the uh, the charity auctions at NBAA and other kinds of things. Look at the prices that those are going for. Uh, you know, those might be a little bit inflated because of the charity uh, element. But uh, look at other pieces that are of a similar quality and make sure that yours is in that range. You don't want to be doing the bargain basement thing here, right? No. Yeah, people don't like to um, get a bargain on art, you know. I mean, people may love to get a bargain on art, but they want to feel like they're investing in something that's an important piece of work, uh, that's going to improve the value of their FBO, that's going to be impressive when people look at it. And most people in aviation don't know that much about art. There's not that much overlap between um, aviation professionals and art professionals, right? Exactly. So, yeah, most of the people at the NBAA show are not going to know the difference between um, an original, a limited edition, a part of a series, a reproduction, you know, they don't know what the high numbers uh, are worth less than low numbers on a series, you know, they don't know these things about the art industry, right? I didn't either, but you do. Well, <laughs> I know just enough to be dangerous, but, uh, you know, about marketing I know a lot, so, you know, this is something that can be helpful. So, in your catalog, you're going to want to include the story behind each piece and information about how that piece was created. You're also going to want to talk about you and talk about your art, other pieces of art. So, other pieces that you have sold and what they have sold for. So, if you sold one at auction six months ago for um, a certain price, and you know I'm not even going to get into what that might be, you want to mention that, especially if it's something that's impressive and if it's something in the range of what you're trying to sell for now. Um, you want to mention the galleries and installations that feature your work. Uh, you know, if it's in the, uh, the Boeing headquarters, if it is in a gallery somewhere, if it is in a museum somewhere, you want to make, mention those kinds of things. Um, and you also want to explain the differences between the types of art that you create. So you're going to have some pieces that are probably higher and lower priced. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to explain 
uh, how you arrive at that so that people feel really good about the prices that you're charging, right? Absolutely. So they're going to fall in love with it first, but then they have to justify it to themselves or to someone else. Right. So, right. Okay. Okay, so that's all before the show. During the show, some suggestions to make this more interesting and to get more people to your booth, because obviously the more eyes you get on your work, the better. And these pictures um, that I'm using here, if you're looking at this on um, in our video, are from arts festivals and other kinds of things. You're probably going to want to shoot more for something like the one on the right mm -hmm. rather than the one on the left. The one on the left is kind of an arts and crafts, arts festival, informal, uh, low-budget kind of a look, which is great if it's Sunday in the park and you're selling paintings that are casual or their reproductions are not worth a whole lot. Unfortunately, and I know our friend Nate is not loaded with cash, but if you're going to be spending the money on the booth and if you're going to be spending money on travel and everything else, you might as well spend a little bit more on some really nice displays and put a lot of thought into how to show your work to its best visuals, you know, mm -hmm. make sure that the lighting is good. Uh, which is not going to be easy, actually, at MBAA. No, it's not. You're going to have to be running cords everywhere without it looking like you're running cords everywhere. Uh, you know, there's a lot of considerations to go into that. And if you've done art shows in the past, you know a lot more about this than we do. But you do definitely want to make this look high-end, right? Absolutely. Okay. Other things you can do is to feature a different piece every hour. So you may have an easel at the front of your... Uh, booth or something like that where you have a piece that everyone can see walking by uh, and you are going to want to rotate that probably every hour or every other hour so that people walking by more than once are going to see something different each time. Uh, another thing that you can do is to have that featured piece uh, have someone come and give a, um, a lecture on that era in history or that type of aircraft or something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of celebrities that are going to be at NBAA anyway. So you can find out who could tell the best story about that piece of art and have them come be a guest speaker, give a five or ten minute just a presentation about that piece of art. It's going to draw a crowd. Uh, that's exactly what you want. It's going to um, show off the history of that piece. It's going to make that piece worth more because art is a symbol of something. And the more people know about what it's a symbol for, the more they're going to value that piece of art and the more they're going to want that so that they can tell that story in their place of business or in their home. Right. Right? Okay. Okay. So you also want to publish a schedule once you figure out what that is so that people know, you know, um, exactly. if you've got an astronaut coming by to talk about <laughs> this particular painting, uh, you know, that would be a fantastic uh, thing for people to know and then somebody who's a really big fan of that era in history or that aircraft or that celebrity or whatever is going to show up at that time and want to make sure that they mark their cal calendar for that, right? Yep. And since you've gone to all this trouble, you certainly want to collect leads. Exactly. So yeah, Probably you could uh, offer some catalogs in exchange for business cards and put notes on the cards on which piece they're interested in and ask a few questions, get some information so that you can contact them again. Exactly. So, you know, if I'm selling art in this booth and John walks up and says, can I have a catalog? What I'm going to be worried about is that it's not going to make it home. You know, that he's not going to value that catalog. He's going to forget about it. It's going to go in his bag with everything else. So I'm going to ask John, you know, can I have a business card? Of course. And tell me what your favorite piece is here today. And he'll point at one and I'll <laughs> make a note on the back of his business card and I'll hand him a catalog and he'll be on his way. That way I can follow up with John and I know which piece he is the most interested in. And then if I haven't sold that piece, heaven forbid, uh, I may want to make a deal after the show mm -hmm. uh, to the person who's the most interested in, in that piece, depending on, on how you feel and how you <laughs> how desperate you are to recoup your, your uh, expenses from the show, right? Well, there may be more than one person interested in the same piece. That's true. And then you can contact them and say, you know, there are three people who are interested in this. This is the selling price. Nobody's bid that amount yet, but, you know, let me know what you're willing to uh, to part with for that uh, for that piece, right? Exactly. Okay. So that's another way to really make the most out of this after uh, after the show. So you want to send all of your leads repeated follow-ups by mail and by email, right? And so what sort of things should I send these leads? 
<laughs> the follow-ups. Right. Well, and you don't Besides want to... Besides the catalog, they already have one. Drive supposedly. people crazy. Yep, they supposedly already have a catalog. You might do brochures on particular pieces or on the one that they are the most interested in, something that's uh, in a little more depth uh, about that. You can do newsletters, including information about you know which pieces sold to where, if you have that information and are able to share that. Uh, schedules of where they can see your art next. So, you know, we'll be at Sun and Fun or we'll be at this show or that show later. Or, you know, we've got a gallery opening in New York on in uh, December. You know, whatever your, your schedule is, you want to make sure that people know that. So then the next event, you're going to have a bigger crowd and right. more of a following. And it keeps going. And it keeps going and it builds on itself. So the more art you sell, the more art you will sell, right? Mm, exactly. Okay. So if you want to talk about this or anything else about trade shows or art or <laughs> uh, selling anything at trade shows, uh, now is a great time because we've got the time to do some ideas that take some more planning than others. And the more planning you put into your trade shows, the better results you're going to get out of them and the less you're going to spend on them, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so there's a Let's Talk button on the lower left-hand corner of our website, so go ahead and click that. Schedule 30 minutes with us, and we'd be happy to talk with you about anything you like and uh, having to do with marketing or sales, right? <laughs> of course. Of course. Thank you for joining us, and have a great day. And we'll see you next time. Right.